Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts. Finally, finally, after all this time waiting, Arcane Season 2, aka the final season, unfortunately, it's here. Finally here. Season 1 was fantastic. And as somebody who has not played League of Legends, as far as I can remember, I think I remember if I ever played it, getting into this show, cause hearing how great it was when those first three episodes dropped, I was blown away by how good those first three episodes in season one were, and then just loving the show at the end, by the end, in terms of everything they were doing, all the characters, all the storylines, it was so good. I couldn't believe how good this show was. And they've made it to where, yes, if you're a League of Legends fan, you'll recognize some stuff and everything, but they make it to where anybody could jump in and enjoy the show, and that's the best thing, and I love how they handled it. And like I said, we've been waiting a long time and season two is here with the first three episodes. This is, season, of course, season two, episode one, Heavy is the Crown. I'm ready just to dive in. I'm, I'm done rambling at this point. I just want to get into it, get back into the show. Without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Let's check out season two premiere of Arcane. Let's go. Oh, it's the aftermath of what Jinx did at the end of the first season, right? Yeah. Yep, taking place right after. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. Mm. What a way to open this damn show again. Jesus. I don't know how we will face this crisis without Tara. Together united. We are charged with imposing order. Mm -hmm. And we've been asleep at our posts. As we are at war, I thought it prudent to solicit the advice of such an experienced veteran. An unprecedented show of force. We mm. flood the Undercity with oh, forces. Armed with Hextech. Innocents will be caught in the crossfire. What is she doing here? Oh, Officer shit. Sheridan witnessed the attack firsthand. Mm -hmm. She confirmed this was the act of a single deranged individual. Two to one. We invade. This is bad. This is going to go really bad. What's that? I forgot how good this show looked. My god. You were right, Kate. Powder's gone. Mm -hmm. They could make this right if you get Jace to fix the gauntlets. My mother was right. My arrogance led me to take on more than I could handle, and she paid the price. Is one of us. Oh. I can't wear this. I watched them kill my parents. Do you have any idea how mm. that feels? Yes, I do. I thought you were on our side. She is, but you didn't think at all. Oh shit. Why does he look familiar? How is he? Same as before. Breathing. Wow. Shifting through runic patterns faster than I can keep up. All I know for certain is that it's keeping him alive. It should be me up there instead of him. Can't do that. that. Can't do that. There's no sense to these things, Jace. Never is. How's Victor? Confusing. I can't even tell if he's still in there. I see mother when they found wow. her. Wow. And every fiber of me just sinks. I want to tear that laugh from her throat forever. Kate. Ooh, I like that line. Bye. Wear a badge. She thinks those are interesting. But I get it. I'm the one who created the monster. This is true. Yeah. Junior Officer Nolan. Maddie. You have to ask. Is all true. You went after Sokol alone when the council wouldn't back you. Mm. Taking this whole gang. I'm glad you're joining up. Uh, she's not though. After the sheriff betrayed us. <laughs> Who is that guy with her? He's clearly up to no good. They're veiled. Who? Who? Mm. Together, not by birth or Who are these veiled people? By all that we share. 
These things we share are what make us one people. Councillor Iris Baldock, Councillor Tormin Hoskin, and Councillor Cassandra Kiriman were taken from us. Hey, something bad's about to happen. Oh shit, come on. Oh, come on, isn't it? Oh no. Oh no. It's all happening at once. Oh shit. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh god. Uh. What the hell is going on? What in the fuck, man? Oh shit. This is a slaughter. Careful, careful. That's too close. There you go. There you go. There you go. Kick an ass. Come on. Ooh. Damn. Come on. You gotta keep hitting. Oh shit! He's trying. He's trying. Ooh! Oh! Are they about to kill him right now? My son. son? Shit. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, what? Oh, okay. It's them. Shit. We literally had a tragedy and a big thing happen at the end of season one. Now we have this. None of this is on our terms. Maybe you should change that. Well, I don't know how, okay? I know you doubt the merit of your birthright, Caitlin. There's wisdom in that. Does anyone still doubt that our enemy is greater than one deranged individual? full-scale invasion. The Undercity's attack proved that. This is a closed council meeting. Locate Jinx, dismantle Shimmer, and neutralize any agents still loyal to Silco. Damn. Oh, shit! Yeah! This is how you bring back the show. This was so good. And I honestly was expecting that, okay, we're going to probably open season two with, of course, the aftermath of what happened with Jinx, you know, shot up the council or whatever with that rocket, that explosion. I figured as much we're going to pick up right there. And we did. We did. The first couple of minutes, very sad. It's pretty heartbreaking. And it's basically getting us back into this world and seeing the horrible after effects of just Jinx alone just her right and there's other things at play in terms of silco and all that kind of stuff but still jinx was the main threat there and i'm thinking this is just going to be an episode where we're just going to kind of get back into the groove if you will in terms of getting us all back into the story and seeing these characters again no there's a lot of things happening plus a gigantic action invasion type thing went down during this memorial for the council members that actually died at the end of season one and everything insane but then again it goes to show in this show in this world that they're all living in anything's going to happen and the, when the veil people came in and they're 
they should have known. They should have known. But then this, there's this warship coming in, dropping off these kind of zombie-esque kind of things hidden behind these gigantic, you know, armor-like machines. And they remind me a little bit of, um, I forget what they're called in Bioshock, but the gigantic, you know, mechanical looking thing. Like, that's what reminded me of a little bit in terms of the design. Um, also, like, for some reason, a little bit of Mr. Freeze with the helmet or whatever, but obviously very different. And there was that one character that was following Jace with that chainsaw. And then for my son or something like, so there's some sort of personal connection there. And then of course, at the end we had where um, they all were taken out by these like, you know, spears or whatever being thrown at them or whatever. Cause originally, you know, freaking Vi run off and found the hammer and Jace and they're holding it and they're about to explode and all that showcasing that, you know, Hey, there is other people at play in terms of, you know, fighting back on everything, but still, it was intense. It was intense. It was, and I honestly thought they were, they were going to kill Jace. I had this sneaking suspicion. Like, they're going to kill him right now. Like, what a way to go. But then again, it's like, I don't know. Because this show is so unpredictable. Because number one, I'm not really familiar with these characters at all besides season one of Arcane. And now what we've seen so far in this in this season with the first episode. But I have no idea how it's going to play out. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of potential death. A lot of changing. Because now Vi is now a part of the enforcer. Like she's now an officer and enforcer, like whatever enforcer. She's now a part of it. And the gauntlets are fixed, which is like, yes, but I understand why she initially told Caitlin. No, it's like, cause I like the line too. You didn't, you, you didn't even think at all. You didn't even think at all when asking me if I should join up. Of course she does at the end realizing it's not just my sister who is no longer really my sister anymore. She realizes that, you know, who she who she remembered when they were younger is gone now. Jinx is a completely different ind individual. But there's far more threats and far more things going on here. I mean, Caitlyn lost her mother. There's the, the attack that went down. It's clear there's so much more at play here that she has to kind of put aside her personal things in terms of seeing her parents getting killed by the badge that she is putting on. But I think it really goes to show that she understands there's much more at play here, much more going on. The guy that she was drinking with, he's now with them at the end. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like, I don't know who it is. I'm like, for me, he looks familiar for some reason. But now he's a part of it. I don't know if maybe he was, a, he used to be one. Or if, like, he's secretly a really good fighter and he's kind of tasked. Maybe he's been following, you know, uh, Vi around. I, I I don't know. Like, in the in the shadows or whatever. Like, maybe he's, like, a secret guardian that she's not aware of. Like, I, I don't know what the connection is. But for some reason, she he's pretending to be asleep, but he's like listening in and stuff and then <sighs> pretending to be asleep when she's like, wake up. And then now he's a part of it. So I, I don't know what the connection is. Don't know. Don't know what Silco's doing at the end there uh, with those wolf looking creatures, but okay, there must be something at play there. Victor being stuck within like, you know, that stasis or whatever. Very interesting. Like, I don't know what that means, but it definitely, like they definitely make a point to highlight it and talk about it several times something's going on and it's constantly changing like jace was saying it's constantly changing its dimension or something like it's he basically i can't keep up with all the changes it's going through so i don't even know what's going on i don't even know if he's even in there anymore and then we see the little movement at the end so clearly something's up with that um i think jace is probably going to join in the fight maybe not um but he clearly was working on something there at the end while they were all kind of presenting like we're apart we're going to go and get jinx but there's more going on they're going to basically not just take jinx out but they're actually going for other purposes too so it's a full front assault it's not an invasion i mean unless they are going to end up doing the invasion still because there's a lot of power play at work too here a lot of different power struggles because on one hand, you know, you have that one council member who's now in a wheelchair. I think he was he in a wheelchair before. I don't think he was. Um, but he was like saying, we need a full fledged assault with Hextech. We need to go down there and wipe them all out or wipe out all the bad, whatever. And then it was the counterpoint. Well, innocents are going to be caught in the crossfire, right? And he doesn't care. At, the, at that moment early on in the episode, he just didn't give a shit. He's like, and how many more council members have to die for you to realize what's going on here? I understand council members are probably important in terms of the society and like what, like how they live their lives. I understand the importance of them because they all brought something different to the table to make decisions and to hopefully 
rule and whatever govern over all of this in a in a meaningful manner in terms of their society, their city. I get it. However, just going and attacking a whole underground it's probably not the smart idea because as Vi was telling Caitlin before they, you know, when after the whole uh, big uh, action sequence of Zero in the second and third act of the episode, she, she was saying, like, I, I don't even know, like, like, I don't know what's going on. And then Vi's like, well, if you go down there, they were on your turf this time. You're going to be on their terms. So like, I, I don't even know what the terms is. Like, she was like so flustered. Obviously, I understand Caitlin was all flustered. But Vi's right. Like, if they go down there at a full assault, no real plan, which obviously at the end of the episode, it's clear that Caitlin has a plan with a few individuals, including Vi and all that, to go down there. And they have a, three things they're going to accomplish. Well, attempt. But a full-fledged assault, just fuck it. Just go. It, it's not going to end well. Like, regardless. They may succeed, but there's going to be a lot of potential innocents dying in the process. Or they all just get slaughtered. Like, you know, because it's proven right now, look... They were not prepared for what just happened at that kind of memorial to reveal the statues of the council members. It was very clear. They were not prepared for this shit. <laughs> so it was intense. So, yeah. So I really enjoyed the episode. I really love how they got back into it. Yes, we kind of reset this, reset the stage, if you will, in terms of where these characters are at. But we also got a lot of interesting bits. And there's a lot of questions I have. So uh, I'm ready to dive into the next episode, see what it's happening, and see what's ha going on. Because they re released episode three, three episodes at once, and it's kind of like you know, like Ugh, I don't have the time to really do this. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. I'm curious to know what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.